that's just what it is. It's like, I can't change it. And so since I can't change it, like, why be frustrated about it? And like, I think the same is true in business. You know, there's a Tony Robbins quote. It says, life is happening for you, not to you. Because I think a lot of people say like, you know, say they have a struggle in their business. We had one with my old business with the um, energy bar company. It it was crippling. I thought it was going to sink our business. You know what? I'm like, this is happening for me. I don't know why. I don't know why we are going through this. I made it, it basically sapped us dry of like the remaining funds we had in the business at the time. And so I don't know how we're going to get through this, but we're going to get through it. Kept a positive mindset and kept moving on. And like in a year and a half later, like we sold the business. Hello and welcome to the Who's Going to Stop Me podcast. Join us on an exciting journey to the depths of the human mind and soul of those who have been successful, of those who have been maybe where you want to go. I promise you one thing and one thing only by listening to this podcast, and that is a life that is more full, that is more exciting, and that will bring you more fulfillment. This episode features Caleb Simpson. He is the founder of Hemp Daddies. He sells CBD products and are part of this huge growth in the medicinal cannabis niche. Caleb teaches us from the ground up, what is CBD? What are the huge benefits from using it that you can get in your life and really how to maximize its impact and uptake in your body? Not only this, he breaks down all the critical elements of his business success, how he built his product, his marketing strategy, and practical ideas you can use on search engine optimization, Instagram marketing, structuring your business, and how to push the needle and get sales. So if you want to maximize your business, learn about CBD and the ever-growing medical marijuana and cannabis field and niche, listen to this episode it's it's really fascinating caleb is warm friendly and very knowledgeable as always if you take something away from this episode then head over to itunes and leave us a review i'd really appreciate that thank you let's start with a little bit about who you are because um you know, some some of our audience may have um, bought some of your products before or heard of you from previous businesses that you've been involved in, but it might be nice for them to have some context into into who you are before we get into all that juicy stuff. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so we'll start a little bit with my background. So prior to starting Hemp Daddies, I was one of the co-founders of Bearded Brothers Energy Bars, which is a national energy bar brand. And like we, you know, we got it, we were in over 2000 locations nationwide and like, and ended up seeing an exit from that business last year. And that was like one of the most stressful things I've ever gone through in my life. I mean, a lot of people from the outside probably think, you know, a liquidity event like that is probably a really awesome thing. But the reality of it is it's a very stressful thing. There's lots of negotiations. It's a very long process. It doesn't happen fast. And we fast tracked it, and it still took us a couple of months to get a deal done. And so that, you know, like I said, that's I was super stressful. And during that time, I started taking CBD oil. I mean, it wasn't necessarily for the stress; it was more for some of my my running injuries that I had um, having problems with. But I remember I remember sitting down with one of my friends in the food industry one day, and he was just asking me, "He's like, with all you have going on in your business, why are you not stressed out of your mind?" I said, you know, I don't know, but like, I think it's the CBD thing that I've been taking. It's like, I mean, I, I don't really feel stressed with all that's going on. Um, I mean, at least not, I mean, there is definitely stress. Don't get me wrong, but like, it just wasn't at the level that most people would probably be experiencing with what I was going through. And so I just saw all these amazing benefits, like the stress reduction, the inflammation reduction. Like I had this chronic injury in my shoulder from a car accident years ago. And there was that, um, Achilles tendonitis issue I'd been dealing with from running for years and the inflammation and the pain associated with that was going down. And one of my morning practices is meditation. I always kind of do a, a body scan. And one of the first things I get to is my shoulders and I always feel this tension in there. And like, and the tension like this was reduced drastically. And so just, I, mean, I saw all these benefits I was receiving from CBD and going and exiting from a business. That's like, well, what's next? You know, what am I going to do next year? 
And we had already been thinking about launching CBD products within the business that I was in. And the new management team had no interest in doing that. It's like, well, you know what? I'm, I'm taking it off on my own. I'm going to do it on my own. And that's exactly what I did. It was, yeah, I was already working on Hemp Daddies before like the exit out of that other business was even complete. So like day one, when I was, when my contract was up with the new management team, I was off and running with Hemp Daddies. And that was about eight or nine months ago um, now. So we're not even fully a year old. We've been in business about eight, eight months now. Wow. Okay. Very cool. That's very, very interesting. And uh, it's. I think it's interesting how, for me, I always find it uh, like very intriguing when someone like starts using something in their own life or feel like, okay, there's a pain point in my life and, and, and they find or discover something and then they turn that into a business because then other people can really relate to that or can, it's a real problem people are having instead of some people create businesses around needs that, um, or, or, or that they aren't necessarily um, creating a product to fill a need they're, they're, they almost imagine a problem and sometimes that works out sometimes it's like this amazing product that like we all need right like we wouldn't have imagined like smartphones maybe 15 years ago um, but sometimes it can just be catastrophic because no no one actually wants the thing that uh, that this person is selling so I think it's really interesting how you discovered CBD and you're like wow this this thing, this this really does work, and um, it's making me feel super. Um, you know, it's kind of healing injuries and, and making you feel a lot better, less stressed out. So, talk to me a little bit about like, okay, let's break this down. Like, pretend I'm like a, a five year old child or something, <laughs> and and like explain. Okay, we've got cannabis, marijuana, we've got CBD, we've got hemp, we've got like break down. Like, I guess from a plant like you know structure kind of where cbd comes from and and how that differs from say thc or something like that okay yeah definitely i can definitely explain that and actually i heard a a new analogy recently that i'm going to try to use today that i really liked so hemp and marijuana are both cannabis and so you know people in the hemp industry they call themselves cannabis entrepreneurs and people in the marijuana industry same thing but the two plants are very, very different. And in fact, they're kind of totally different in a sense. They're the same species. They're both the cannabis plant, but they're as different as like a poodle and a pit bull. So both are dogs, but both are very genetically different. And the same is true with like hemp and marijuana. And so marijuana is going to be very high in THC. And that's the psychoactive component that gets people high. But CBD, on the other hand, or hemp, I should say hemp, on the other hand, is very high in CBD and low in THC. And the industrial hemp that is grown now, in order to be considered industrial hemp, contains 0.3% THC or less, which is not enough to get you high. Like, I mean, people are getting high off like 15, like to 30% THC. That's what you find in marijuana. So what you find in hemp is just negligible. But at the same time, there's this whole host of medicinal and therapeutic benefits found in CBD. And there's actually like hundreds of different cannabinoids found in the marijuana and the cannabis plant. And CBD is one of the ones found to have the most medicinal and therapeutic benefits. So there's kind of two main products you'll see on the market. You'll see a CBD isolate and you'll see a full spectrum CBD. And that full spectrum CBD contains several different cannabinoids. There's like CBC, CBG, CBN, and each one of those contains like different medicinal and therapeutic benefits. But the main one that like these extractors are focusing on is the CBD because that's the one they have found that had the most medicinal and therapeutic benefits. Okay, so let's start with, I guess, the benefits. And you mentioned some of those, you know, when you started taking them, like maybe less stress and more relaxation what other kind of what have the studies shown when it comes to cbd yeah man it is, it is just amazing like this the things that cbd will help with i'm like i'm just constantly being blown away by like new stories that you know i read you know just like even our customer testimonials of people that are getting benefits like one of the biggest ones that a lot of people um, we'll see is like people that struggle with like some sort, some form of epilepsy. Like, so it's really good for like reducing seizures. Um, 
in epilepsy patients. So I have one customer who's actually a friend of my dad's and his wife has been struggling with seizures for years. Like, and she's on all sorts of medication and they tried our CBD oil. And like, and to this day, I think she's like 12 weeks without a seizure. And that's, she's never gone anywhere close to that long. And so they're just seeing this amazing benefits. And I mean, there's just so many things. One of the biggest ones that it's responsible for is like inflammation reduction. So if you're an athlete, like a runner, like I am, it's really good because it helps cut down an inflammation. It speeds up recovery. And I mean, there's like a whole, like, so people like X as I think it's called eczema, it's like a skin condition. So we have a topical lotion you can use on stuff like that and it can help um, clear that up and it, and, you know, and it can even be taken internally in the oil format and it can help with that as well. And like, I mean, there are just so many things that it helps with it's, and I'm like, it's, it's interesting though, because just like any other medication, like everyone's going to respond differently to it. And so on one hand, a lot of people look at CBD and say, it's like, it's a magic bullet. It cures everything. I mean, that's not the, that's not true. It's like, it's, it's addressing symptoms. Just like, let's say you just scrub, struggle with depression. You're going to take Zoloft and that's masking like it's taking away the symptoms of depression. It's not healing you. And CBD is the same way. It, it's medicine. And so when it works to address these symptoms, but there are just so many symptoms that like CBD can help with. But, you know, I, I don't want like to call it the magic bullet because everyone responds to it differently. I mean, just like with any medication out on the market, everyone's going to respond differently to it. For some people, it's going to work great. For other people, it may not work so good. But at the same time, like I always encourage people to be patient with CBD, like in, in take time, since there's not a lot of scientific evidence out there right now, you really have to experiment with dosing on your own to figure out what's going to work for you. And so when people say that, oh, I tried CBD, it didn't work for me, I always ask them, it's like, well, how much were you taking? How often were you taking it? And like, and, and a lot of the times I'll be like, well, hey, we'll give it another try and try this. And, and they'll come back and say, man, that worked great. I started seeing results. So since this is such a new thing, there's still, I mean, there's loads of anecdotal evidence. There's a few scientific studies, but I mean, over after more and more scientific research is, comes out on this, I think we're going to start seeing kind of some more definitive um, things in terms of like what people should be taking in terms of dosing. Funny thing is a funny little story, I guess. Um, being from the UK, um, I'm not sure if actually CBD oil uh, is is legal in the UK or not, but um, I don't remember when I was living there. Right now I'm in Thailand, but I, I travel between Thailand, Vancouver. That's where my girlfriend is from, Vancouver. And I remember one day I must have been stressed out or can't sleep or something. And she said, just take this. And I was like, what, what, what's this? She's like, just trust me, just take it. And like, I remember feeling really relaxed and like just very much, uh, and I, I had a great night's sleep. Um, and then I took it a few more times. I was like, what is this that you're giving me? And she's like, CBD oil. And I was like, okay, I trust you. I trust you. But now that I've, <laughs> now that I've kind of done more research and obviously learning through this conversation, it's all starting to make sense. Um, it's all, all starting, the, the pieces are starting to click together. Um, so it's, I think it's very honest what you said there when you said it's a medicine and it's not going to work for everyone. Um, would you... I mean, would you call it a medicine? Obviously, it does heal things, so it has medicinal purposes in that sense. But I always, when I when I think of medicine, I think of, you know, as you, you said, Zoloft, or I think of like ibuprofen, and I always think that there's like negative consequences of these, I guess, these more like chemically produced medications, right? And I, d I don't know, is, 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 would you class CBD and, and hemp kind of in that same sphere because holistic health practitioners are probably like going crazy right now here yeah. in this but you know what what's your opinion there yeah i mean i mean yeah i mean it, it is medicine but at the same time it's it's all natural it's from a plant and you know like i like the quote i can't remember it's it's an old quote but it says like let food be thy medicine and so just like some i mean there's a lot of people out there who go through like you know their battle with cancer and healing their cancer by changing their diet. Like, and you'll go on like a complete plant-based diet and like reverse their cancer. I mean, I'm not 
I'm not advocating this. I'm just saying like, it's, there's people out there that have done that. And, and this is just one more kind of like, like tool in the toolbox for like holistic healing. And, and it works great. And like, I mean, like you said, like you slept better. Like that's one of the first things people notice when they take CBD is like better sleep. Like I'm someone like I never really struggled with sleep, but when I started taking CBD oil, I was like, I'm sleeping better. Like I already sleep good and I'm sleeping even better. Um, you know, like I said, early in the start too, it's like it helped with stress people that struggle with anxiety, like CBD can really help with that. My wife has seen some good, um, positive things in terms of like, you know, it helping with depression. And so there's, I mean, there's all these things that CBD can help with. So in a sense it is medicine, but at the same time, it's like, it's from a plant and it's all natural and it's not harmful. It's not chemically produced. Um, a lot of people in the industry like to say, you know, our bodies have, we haven't talked about this yet, but I'll mention it here. So our bodies have an endocannabinoid system, not a Zoloft system. And so our bodies do have this thing called the endocannabinoid system. It was only discovered recently, I think in the 40s. And there's these all these receptors in our body that respond to cannabinoids, which are found in the hemp in the uh, marijuana plant. And so we have this regulatory system within our body that's meant for and intended um, for cannabis. And so like when we consume cannabis, it interacts directly with that system and kind of like – it's kind of like an adaptogen. It helps our body maintain this homeostasis and and just promotes healing and inflammation reduction and, and all these positive things. And it does kind of sound like a magic bullet in many ways. It sounds like it, it kind of heals so many different things. Um, obviously, for every person, as you mentioned, it's different. But like, I'm looking at this list of things that it helps with, like autism, ADHD, PTSD, you know, strokes, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, as you mentioned, inflammation, um, kind of mental illness, right? Quote, unquote, mental illness, skin disease. It sounds like that's a lot of things. Like it does kind of sound like a magic bullet. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and, crazy. and for that reason, I think that's why like big pharma is scared. Like, I mean, they don't want like hemp and CBD to come out on the market, but there are a couple of drug companies out there that already have like CBD based and THC or uh, the one that has T it's a synthetic THC, but there's, so there's two different, I think, um, GW pharmaceuticals, one of them, I can't remember the name of the other, but GW pharmaceuticals has a patent on their CBD medicine. So they can, so there's doctors now that can actually prescribe this CBD based medicine. And so, and there's this whole tension too, between like, you know, people that are in like, like the natural healing, like it's like, you know, why, why let big pharma have that? This is a plant and this should be for everybody. And so, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot more tension as this industry continues to grow between, you know, like the farmers and the people producing CBD and like in the big pharmaceutical companies who don't want this out there because it's going to, you know, take away from their patients and their cells. It's like a, it's a money thing for them. Mm -hmm. And do you see them kind of, coming in and just like completely you know because they got that you know cash in the bank almost from you know monopolizing the so many different you know when, when they patent um you know a specific piece of medication they can charge any price for it do you see them coming in and like you know using that, that those huge cash reserves to try and dominate the industry and or, or how do you see them kind of yeah, I, the, you know, yeah. it's hard to say for sure. I think there's definitely going to be some of these big pharma companies coming in here and, you know, maybe even trying to acquire some of the CBD companies or for them, it's probably going to be more like, you know, intellectual property and patents on like specific strains and the genetics behind it and things like that. That's where they, I think, are going to be, you know, dipping their toes in this a little bit more. But at this, and at the same time, this industry is like, it's been growing for like the past few years. It's been, and now it's just this huge groundswell. And now that hemp is federally legal in the United States, like there's going to be more and more people getting into this industry, especially farmers. And so it's going to be like, this hemp is going to be very accessible for people. And so it's going to be very hard for big pharma to like take this over because it's already pretty much in the hands of the people. And so... I think it's going to be pretty difficult for them to like, you know, take over, but you know, it, 
I, and I don't think that will happen, but I do think they are going to definitely have some skin in the game for sure when it comes to like CBD products. Uh, this is kind of you're just going a bit wild with this now. But are there any like unexplored strains of hemp or specific strains of hemp that they're blending? And like, is there a possibility that you know we could find like the cure to cancer out of one of these like strains? Or you know, is there anything kind of funky and cool going on in that sense? I'm just curious about that. Yeah. And so for so for years, like in the black market with marijuana, they've been, you know, genet doing all these different I mean, it's not genetically modified. They're just like kind of crossbreeding plant different plants and things like that to like come up with these different strains. And like in hemp also has what's called terpenes. And so I mean, terpenes are found in lots of lots of plants. And so in that there's also medicinal and therapeutic benefits in those terpenes. And so, I mean, just re, I mean, it's only been in the past few years that, um, there's been experimenting with like kind of different strains of hemp. And so I don't know a whole lot about it yet. I know the farm where we grow our hemp, they're experimenting with like, you know, they have different fields that have different, you know, like strains, so to speak in there. So there's been a little experimentation from it, but you know, the sativa cannabis plant is the one is in the industrial hemp plant. And, you know, if in marijuana, you have your indica and your sativa plants. So the indica plant is the one that's going to cause more of like, you know, a lazy sleepy high. And the indica is going to create more of like an energized, you know, effect. And the CBD is produced from like an indica. And so it can be kind of confusing in the sense, well, you said it helps with sleep, but you just said indica is energizing. You know, the reason why CBD is helping with sleep is more, of the calming effect on the mind than it making you sleepy. And so and that's why you can take CBD during, D during the day and not get sleepy from it. How does that actually work is, you know, when, when you say like CBD has that calming effect on the mind, it, what, what, I know that you said the studies are just, it's a relatively new, you know, the studies are, are building up. Um, but yeah. how does that actual science process work? Yeah. So basically um, it's, it's working with your serotonin receptors. So, you know, that's responsible for like your pain and mood. And so it's, you know, I, I don't know the exact science behind it, but it's basically, you know, impacting those serotonin, serotonin receptors to, you know, create that calming effect on the mind. And also, you know, if you have pain, it's not like, it's not like addressing the exact pain necessarily. It's affecting, it's, it's how your brain interprets it basically is what I'm trying to say. And so that's how it's, it's not actually healing that pain point, although, you know, it's reducing the inflammation and over time it's going to help it heal. But the actual pain itself is mainly it's, I mean, just like if you take a medicine, it's going to, it's interacting with the brain and causing your brain's interpretation of that pain to lessen. And it's the same with like CBD as well. Mm hmm. Okay, that's really interesting. And and as I said, like I was reading up on all the benefits and d kind of doing my own research. And I was just thinking, I so I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? And maybe you have customers, I'm sure that do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I think CBD is like, exploding in this niche because of inflammation. And like, I'm just like, I've got a bit of a sore rib at the moment. I'm thinking, oh, I would love some CBD oil to take tonight. Um, So yeah i i yeah i, I it's just a shame because i'm in thailand and um it's strictly strictly uh illegal here and um they, they've got very harsh laws even around cbd so i mean it just tells me that they're not one maybe not 100 percent clued in that thc is the thing that gets you high and cbd yeah. doesn't doesn't do that so yeah and and it's and it's interesting too because like here in here in the u.s where it's they recently legalized it on the federal level, but there are still states that are like digging their hills in the ground. Like I know Louisiana is one of them. They're saying like hemp is still illegal here. You can't consume it in any form. And so like, even though we've had it legalized on the federal level, there's still states that are like, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I don't know if there's like stodgy old men that are running <laughs> that state, but it's usually, like, yeah, usually. Yeah. And it's like, they just like have this, I don't, I know, I don't get it because it's not, it's not a, it's not a drug in the sense that it's causing these psychoactive effects. But people are still, for some reason, very hesitant to accept it and allow it to flourish. And and hemp is very beneficial for the environment. It's going to save a lot of family farms because a lot of these cash crops, these family farms are growing now. They're not getting enough money from it, 
And so hemp is going to save a lot of these family farms and it's going to be really good for the environment. And I mean, all sorts of things, not just CBD. I always find it. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, from my experience of research on different things. So like I'm a big proponent of like cryptocurrencies and like other, other things like that. And I always find this like, it's always some kind of political agenda uh, you know that the, they're trying to self-servient essentially you know they're self-serving and there's some political agenda and maybe big farm or something like that you know there's uh i don't want to get into too many conspiracy theories here but uh usually there's there's some uh very not not backwards people but people that haven't really thought through everything and they're they're very set in their way how does you know how do you produce your products then and how do so you've, you've got this hemp plant um cbd uh how, how do you actually get it into oil form how do you take it and and how how does your product say differ from the other cbd products that are out there yeah great question so so our all our product is grown on it's a single family farm out of <clears throat> colorado and so when they're they have a usda organic certification on the hemp so it's one of the few um, crops out there that has a usda organic certification but the interesting thing about CBD, just because the actual production process itself isn't considered organic, you won't see um, a finished product with a USA organic seal. Like that could change in the future, but for right now, that's just that's not happening. And if you see that, like be wary, because it's usually that like the product was certified organic, but like there's this, and I know this because I ran an organic energy bar company. So you can have a product that is 95% organic. And if the one ingredient that's like less than 5% of the product, like isn't certified organic and it can't be certified, you can call it organic and get that USD organic seal. And the way some of these brands have been able to get around that and put a USD organic seal is because they're selling you essentially like the carrier oil. Like, so our carrier oil is an MCT oil. And so that's, a, that's like 95% of the product. Like the CBD is very concentrated. So it makes up like 5% of that actual bottle, but you're still getting, you know, the CBD concentrates are different for every bottle. But like, because of that, some of these brands have been able to get away with calling it USD organic, but it's very deceptive to the customer because the CBD itself doesn't hold that certification. But our CBD like technically could hold the USD organic certification if it was allowed. And so, you know, like I said, we have organic hemp and we use an extraction process called CO2 extraction. It's the cleanest extraction process available on like within the hemp industry right now. So the alternative to that is called is like an ethanol based extraction process where they soak it in alcohol. And the problem with that process is the plant will soak up whatever you put it in. So even though like they evaporate that alcohol off, like some of that may remain in the finished product. And so a lot of it gets, you know, in the, I'm not too familiar with how they, the whole process goes there, but like some of the finished product might have a little bit of residual, like, you know, alcohol left in or something like that. But like the CO2 extraction process is, you know, this pressurized CO2, that's all it is. And so your finished product is going to be solvent free, like extremely clean, and so like, that's why we go with that extraction technique because it's the cleanest technique available. And so and after they extract the oil and the oil moves into like a second stage, there's two different stages after this though. So they heat it. And so basically when they heat it, it's like, so think about when you smoke weed, like if you just eat the weed, it's not going to do anything to you. It won't get you high because it has to be heated and that activates the THC. And the same is true with the CBD. So it has to be heated up in order to activate that CBD. And after it's heated, it goes through a distillation process. And so that distillation process basically just purifies the oil, makes it extremely clean, it evaporates off any residual, you know, content that might be there. And so that finished product is just a clean CBD product. And so in that distillation process, that's where you start um, – kind of pulling out all these other cannabinoids that are present in the plant and you'll have a full spectrum or you'll have a CBD isolate. And so, and we go with the full spectrum CBD just because there are that what's, that's what provides the most medicinal and therapeutic benefits. 
and they call it the entourage effect. So when you have all the cannabinoids working together, it's kind of like a symphony, like this working in harmony to kind of address all the issues in the body. But when you have a CBD isolant, on the other hand, it removes all those other cannabinoids, even the THC. And so it's just not as effective. And there's, there is actual scientific studies on this one that prove that the full spectrum CBD is more beneficial than like a CBD isolate. Wow, so there's this real accurate like, process there, and it sounds like you guys have really kind of nailed that process and you know produce a, a really high you've really done your research and produce a really high quality product um so that's 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 really awesome um so let's say like you know I wanted to you take some CBD so you've got I can see on your website you've got capsules and then you've got oil and then you've got the the transdermal cream so what um where would you consider where would you suggest someone start basically if they're just like okay I love the sound of this sounds this sounds amazing um how would you suggest what's like the method of the delivery like how would you suggest yeah I always suggest starting with oil like that's the number one place you can start and it's especially because like, so the capsules we sell are a 20 milligram capsule. So that's kind of a high dose to start with. Like, I mean, just like, you know, again, kind of going back, relating it to like medications, you usually start with a lower dose and kind of work up. And the same is true with CBD. You don't just want to inundate your body with this high dose of CBD. You want to start with a low dose and you want to gradually work up. And so I recommend like every five to seven days increasing your dose. Start with like a five milligram dose. And after five to seven days, bump it up another five milligrams. And keep doing that every week until you start seeing results. Um, and, and another reason to do this too is, I mean, the CBD is kind of expensive too. I mean, at least prices will eventually come down a little bit. But overall, like CBD is kind of pricey. And so like you want it to last as long as you can. So like there's no need to take more than you need. And so I always recommend to start with a low dose and gradually work up until you start seeing results. And you also will have to probably experiment with the time of day you take it. Always recommend when starting out, take it at night because you'll at least notice better sleep. And then after that week, maybe add your second dose in the morning. So like the half-life of CBD is about 11 to 20 hours, you know, depending on your metabolism. So it's good to get it in like two different times a day so the levels of CBD in your system stay stay up. So if, at some point, you're going to want to go to two doses a day. But, you know, again, again, it just goes back to like starting low and going slow. Great stuff. Um, so you just would take like the oil and you would just take it by itself? Like you wouldn't like mix it with anything or like, you, you know? Yeah, correct. So yeah, like y'all explain that. That's one thing I kind of often forget because I'm, I'm so used to taking and I know how. So you, <laughs> you take it sublingually. So you just, you fill the dropper up or, you know, whatever, you know, if you got a 20 milligram dropper and you're going to start out, you're going to take like a quarter of that dropper. You're going to put it under your tongue and just let it sit there for as long as you can. Like then, you know, after it's been sitting there for 30 to 60 seconds to swallow whatever's left. And like, and that's the best way to like get CBD into your body. And the alternative is the capsule format. So after you've been taking it a while, well, I could say you just want the convenience of a capsule. Like, and it has other benefits too. It's a kind of a slower timed release. So when you take it in the capsule format, it's kind of similar to like an edible with like, you know, marijuana. It it takes longer to enter into your system and it kind of, and it, you process it a little bit differently. So I've noticed like if I take a capsule before bed, like that, the capsule will help me stay asleep better than like the oil because just the way it, just the way it works in my body. And so, and everyone's going to be different though. Um, and the capsules are just super convenient too. So like, I like taking them on like hikes with me, or if I'm going on a long run, I'll take a capsule with me so I can just take one kind of mid run. And because it's just a little bit easier to carry with me than the oils because it's a little lighter weight. And we also have the transdermal creams as well. So like, let's say you struggle with like arthritis or, you know, sore muscles, achy joints, like that's going to help you as well. But, you know, the oil will probably help the most and like the cream will just kind of be a little bit of extra bang for the buck. And, and the cream is really good for like sore muscles as well, like skin conditions and just like, and things like that. But, you know, people will almost 
always notice some sort of result from the oil. Oh, I, I wish it was uh, legal in Thailand. Like, um, I really want to get started with some CBD. Um, and I've learned so much, like, even from the, you know, the first 30 minutes of this conversation. So, so thank you for that. Um, so let's talk a little bit of, about the business side of things now, because, um, you know, you're an entrepreneur. You've, as you mentioned at the start of the episode, you founded another business before this one and the CBD and like medical marijuana business, you know, are booming right now. You know, there's a lot of opportunity. There are a lot of startups fighting and competing to, to win market dominance. What are you doing that is going to make Hemp Daddy succeed, <laughs> essentially? Kind of what, what are the, the, yeah, what's kind of your, your, I don't want you to give away your business strategy, right? But how, how are you differentiating yourself? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I mean, for, for one, like we have a high quality product. Like that's, you know, probably first and foremost, and people actually see results when they take our product. And the other thing I think really is going to be setting us apart is that we educate people about the product. Like there's tons of like, you know, educational articles on our site. We have a few videos on YouTube as well. So I love to be an educator and teach people about this. I'm, I'm also very accessible just through email, like I'm on our chat app through the website a lot of the times too, just to answer people's questions. And, you know, I know some other people who are like investors in the space. And one of the things they do is they'll just call some of these companies up and just to see who pick up, picks up the phone and see what they say. And a lot of the times they're finding that the people doing customer service for them, like don't even know Jack about CBD. They can't even answer their questions. Um, they're there basically to answer a problem if there's an issue with an order. And so they, they don't have the educational component of like, you know, they don't have the heart of a teacher. They're in it for the money. They're not in it to like actually help people. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that's helping us stand out is like that we're, we're in this to educate people about, you know, CBD and hemp and just the health benefits of it and kind of, you know, helping to end the stigma surrounding cannabis because, you know, it's not just a thing to get you high and stoned. It's like it actually has medicinal and therapeutic benefits, both CBD and THC. And so, you know, I really just see us being a really big part of just the educational part of, you know, cannabis and what it can actually do and what it actually is. And just kind of ending that whole stigma of in the whole stoner mindset. And so that people realize, hey, this is this plant is medicine. It's not just it's not it's not a drug like LSD or heroin. It actually has benefits. Yeah, I, th I think that's important as well because there is that like almost branding issue there that it all gets lumped into one and people just assume, oh, okay, CBD that, you know, comes from that plant that gets you high, right? And it's like that initial impression you know, will we'll, we'll definitely, you know, t like even in the States, as you said, there's like certain states that are still holding on to these very like old you know old school beliefs that you know aren't really you know founded on facts so yeah i, I really like the fact that you're educating people on your product and you're very accessible and also the the passion is i think the passion is and the, clearly the passion and the attention to detail for the product i think has come from the fact that you use this product your wife uses this product Right. And, and uh, that is really what's going to make the difference. And of course, you know, having great customer service always helps as well. Right. So that's really unique. Marketing a product like CBD, as you said, like there is a stigma. Um, and I know that platforms, you know, paid advertising platforms like Google, Facebook, Instagram, you know, can... I'm not sure actually I don't think you can advertise anything hemp marijuana cannabis on on those platforms if I'm if I'm correct so how do you how how do you how do you get the word out there about you know your startup yeah so that's it's been a, it's been a challenge and so one thing that's worked well for me is like for one like having a niche having a specific audience that I speak to and like, you know, all our marketing kind of focuses in on one target customer and that's trail runners because I'm a trail runner myself and I've seen a lot of benefits from that. And it kind of goes back to the saying in marketing, it's like, if you're, 
um, speaking to everybody, you're speaking to nobody. So I've really niched down and focused in focused my marketing message around the benefits for ultra runners. You know, and I have customers that aren't ultra runners. And so like, you know, my customers span, you know, the whole spectrum. I mean, just like if you think about something like Cliff Bar, like it's an energy bar, or even my old company, Bearded Brothers, both of these companies were like heavily focused on like outdoor enthusiasts, like hikers, runners, cyclists. But, you know, the stay-at-home mom who's on the go with her kids all day is eating Cliff Bars too. And the same is true for our product. It's not just trail runners and ultra runners that are consuming our CBD, but there's this whole spectrum of people. But that allows me to really niche down and focus on like, you know, when I'm doing my advertising, I'm advertising on podcasts because those are run like individuals like you or me. They don't have this um, massive corporate structure over them dictating what they can and can't do. So since we can't advertise on Facebook or Instagram, we're, we're heavily kind of relying on like podcasts doing and I'm lining up like guest appearances on a lot of these shows too. And those generally have done better for me than like an actual advertisement. Cause like, you know, like we're talking here right now, it's like we're getting to educate people and give them lots of information about the product. And so like, that's been really, um, one of the biggest ways I have grown the business so far is just through podcasts and also, you know, a little bit of advertising on some niche web, niche websites, you know, that are run by individuals as well. And again, don't have that, you know, corporate oversight. So there's one website called bike rumor and another one um, called I run far. So both, you know, kind of along the lines of my target market and like, you know, they're allowing me to advertise on their site, have access to their email list and things like that. And so, those have been the main ways, you know, I've been focusing on right now to, to grow this business. And it's, I mean, it's just one of those things you got to get creative and like, you know, one of the next things I'm probably going to be trying is just like, you know, start hitting like kind of the blogger circuit pretty heavy to start reaching out to these people, um, within, you know, my niche that are blogging a lot and have an audience that I can, you know, speak to. And so you just got to get creative and like, and Facebook may never open up advertising to CBD, like, because if you think about it, like alcohol companies can't advertise on Facebook, like gun companies can't advertise on Facebook. So like they may always be closed to cannabis. And, you know, I see a lot of people in the industry com complaining and bemoaning the fact that Facebook won't let them advertise. And there's even like companies out there that have figured out workarounds to get ads on Facebook. But the thing is, they're always having to change it because Facebook will catch on to what they're doing. And so then they'll have to go in and tweak something else. And there's companies paying like up to like $5,000 a month just to run ads. I mean, that's not even the ad spin. That's just to hire a company to be able to run the ads because they're doing all these weird workarounds. And they're basically setting up a second website, mirroring your website that has like no reference to CBD and like, and, and things like that so that they can get the ads approved. Um, so, I mean, to me, that's not feasible because at the end of the day, I still have to make a profit. Yeah, um, I, I, I do. I, I mean, I've done some Facebook advertising, and I, I, as you, you know, I've I've worked on some products uh, like cryptocurrency, like I mentioned before, that um, face Facebook cracked down on. Um, so I had to. I was kind of in charge of Facebook marketing, and it, it it's such a real problem. I I really don't think it's a, a smart strategy to you know, pay $5,000 for, as you said, a workaround that directs to a website that isn't super relevant in the hopes that then you can get them from that website to another website. If it works for someone, great, but it sounds like a lot of work and I kind of feel like Facebook, you know, the more successful your ad becomes, the more Facebook will like look at your ad and go, okay, what are you actually doing there? And you might get shut down anyway. So you're kind of always fighting an uphill battle there. It doesn't, doesn't sound super smart. Um, but okay, so podcasts have been super successful for you. Is there anything else that you've kind of um, figured out or any, any other like, okay, search engine optimization, that's worked for me or like... Um, have you thought about like Instagram influencers or anything like that? Um, what's what's your take on those yeah, the, things? Yeah, all of those have been been things that I've been actually using as well, and I'll, and I'll add in their email as well. So I, I'm building my email list out, and so every customer that comes through, like I'm getting their email, like I may be collecting their email through like you know pop ups, you know on the website, you know giving them coupon codes, and so and that kind of ties into my SEO strategy too. So like I've 
since I built the site out, I've been heavily focusing on, you know, my SEO. I, you know, I use Yoast, um, Yoast SEO plugin for WordPress. It's like the best SEO plugin that I've found. And it is, it, it will go over your post and tell you like if you're using too much passive voice, it will tell you you're not using your keyword enough. It just basically walks you through how to make your posts optimized for search. And so I have a couple posts right now that are ranking like number one in Google. And so I'm getting tons of traffic from, from those posts. And so a lot of them, they're not converting to sales right then. But, you know, I'm, I'm collecting, you know, probably around one to two percent um, of the, that traffic. I'm getting their email address. And so I'm able to kind of trickle emails to those people every now and then. So those people may eventually buy later down the road. So that kind of search engine optimization and email strategy kind of play hand in hand. You know, I also do a little bit of email segmentation as well. So I'll pull, I have another product I use called Glue. It, it's basically just a robust analytical platform that plugs into WordPress. You know, I can pull sales data, customer data. And so I can pull all my customers who have, let's, let's say, for example, that they, they've made a purchase for my site but haven't purchased in the past two months. So I know those customers, um, maybe they had some sort of struggle. Maybe they didn't get the results they wanted from the product. So I can send an email out to those people. And one of the times I'll often do, I'll be like, hey, if you are having issues with the product, let me help you. Or here's a coupon code to come back and buy another thing because I know maybe it's too expensive for you. So, you know, I do a lot of email segmentation. And you mentioned um, Instagram influencers too, or like ambassadors. So we have an ambassador program. We have probably have about 40 brand ambassadors right now. I would say probably about 15 of those are pretty highly active. And I'd probably say, you know, each one of those ambassadors probably bring me one to two customers a month. And so that's been, you know, pretty successful for me. And it's one of those things that, you know, I kind of let off the gas on that one a little bit. And so like moving forward in the next couple of months, I'm planning on, you know, focusing on that, you know, quite a bit more just because like for every influencer I bring in, it's like, if that person brings me like one or two extra customers, it's like, it's definitely worth my time because there's like a lifetime value to every customer. This is the type of product. I mean, it's not like a physical product, like a t-shirt or a pair of pants that somebody's going to be there to buy it once. Like they're going to be back every, you know, every four to six weeks purchasing product from me again. So it's like, there's a, there's a repeat customer aspect of this business, which really helps the business to grow and thrive. And it's so powerful, isn't it? Getting someone like like a brand ambassador for you to speak to their audience is something that we implicitly trust about someone that we follow every single day. We kind of view them almost as our friend or something. And so when they recommend something, we have a real, even if we don't buy it there and then, it's like a subconscious thing where we like trust that brand from then on inward, uh, then on. If we see it somewhere else, we go, oh, yeah, that, that seems familiar. I don't know where, why, but um, eh, maybe I'll buy it this time. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely Instagram inf uh, ambassadors or influencers. That's very cool. Um, I wanted to ask you about the your kind of SEO strategy and, you know, the email segmentation. That, that sounds really smart as well. Um so how do you decide what to write your next post on? Is there a certain process that you go through or is it more like, you know, what, I'm feeling really passionate about talking about the stigma behind this or how do you decide what you're going to write? You know, that's how it was early on. Like that's that was my strategy very early on. I'd say, OK, what do I think, you know, customers are going to want to know? And some of it, some of it I was writing based on kind of like the frequently asked questions. You know, like people would ask the question, oh, does CBD get you high? And so, I, you know, I have posts about, you know, does CBD get you high? How does it make you feel? And that's one of my, that's one of my top ranking posts just because I said, okay, this is a frequently asked question. So this is a pain point for some people. They, they want to know the answer to this. It's, they're kind of scared to try CBD because they think it's going to get them high. And so like, that's one of my top ranking posts. And I had no idea that, you know, the search volume on that and like, yeah, I saw, you know what? I can't remember what it, I know I've looked it up, but I can't remember it. But, you know, it's one of my top ranking posts. Um, and so, but now, you know, I use, um, I'm going like a, a HRF. So HRFs, I use that product now. And, you know, I'll, I'll do some keyword research there now to kind of figure out, you know, wh what I'm going to write about. And so that's been a strategy I've been using. Um, 
you know, so none of none of the posts are ranking yet from that. You know, actually, I take that back. I think one is ranking at the bottom of page one on, you know, can you travel with CBD? So that one came up pretty quickly in the rankings. Um, and so do pretty well on that one. And so, yeah, so that's pr- pretty much it. That's been my SEO strategy, just like doing, you know, you know, taking my own customers frequently asked questions, what I think people will want to know just from what I've seen out there from other brands posting. And now it's, it's involving a little bit of keyword research as well. And, you know, moving forward though, I'm probably going to move away since I got a lot of content now on the site. Like I'm going to focus less on writing new content, more on promoting those existing pieces of content within my email address and my you know, email list, Facebook, and yeah, I'm going to start putting more focus on like, you know, like the brand ambassadors and blog posts. I mean, like getting other bloggers to either let me guest post or do a review about the product and things like that. Cause that also kind of ties into like the backlinking with SEO and getting more links, links to your site. So hopefully once we get that, you know, all these other posts, these older posts will kind of start moving up in the ranking as well. Yeah, I mean, that that definitely, that strategy sounds like it's working for you. And um, it's, it's yeah, it's, uh, I mean, super valuable. And hopefully, like, people are, like, kind of listening in and thinking about their businesses or thinking about, um, you know, potential businesses they might start or the business that what they're working for, how they can maybe bring some of these strategies and ideas to, to that. Um, how do you manage your time then? Because I know that, uh it's potentially just you running this business yep, am i right so how because yeah. you got customer support you got right so you've got customer support you got your um seo you've got you know your ambassadors program the product itself it's like you know a challenge i'm sure but it sounds like you're doing a really good job so i'd love to know how you manage your time and a- allocate it to certain tasks i i block a lot of my time so like there's you know currently like i did early on i had somebody shipping the orders for me but i had to bring it in house just because they weren't you know they weren't providing the quality of service that i wanted so like i brought shipping in in house and so there's like i ship every other day monday wednesday friday from like one to two o'clock, you know, I'm working on shipments and that's all I'm doing during that time. My email's not open. Like that's all I'm doing. And so when I'm writing a blog post, like my email's closed, everything's closed. I'm just focusing on, you know, writing that piece of content. And so, you know, I'm just kind of my, my calendars, I'm kind of pulled up my calendar right now just to kind of give you guys an idea. So like, you know, next week it's like, you know, I have scheduled in like photo shoot and recording a video. There's been a YouTube video I want to recording for a while on a question. So I got it. I got it all blocked in there and it's all scheduled. So I pretty much schedule out all my time like a week in advance, you know, so I can be really focused on those things that I need to do and certain things like, you know, doing my QuickBooks and my financing and, you know, and, and paying my bills like that's, like once a week, I have a time slot allocated for that. And I do it at the same time every week. I mean, occasionally it kind of get, has to get moved, but it gets a new block and something else replaces it. So everything's blocked. Like I know when I'm doing, I know when I'm doing my task, basically, I don't just come into work and go, okay, what am I going to do today? Because it's pretty much been all planned out. Um, you know, there's certain things that aren't getting as much attention as, you know, they need. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to focus more on our ambassador program so that's been getting neglected a little bit but basically you know i'm going to be replacing the time i usually would write content with focusing on the brand ambassador so it really just comes down to like being really intentional with like scheduling things out and batching certain tasks such as like you know the finances and the writing of your content for you what would you say okay this is my needle moving top priorities like the things that like you focus on every week that are like in red in your calendar and you're like this is what i need to get done what would you say those are for yeah, you? Late, lately it had, has been like you know like the or shipping orders for one because like customers have to get their orders so like that's i mean that can't <laughs> that can't be moved that's one and just like in, in, the, in the content writing is one of the biggest ones like just because it's been it's been revenue generating. It's like those have been things that have been generating revenue. And so like, you know, but moving forward, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to make a little shift and start focusing more on some of these other things that have also been helping to generate revenue, like, you know, podcast advertising and 
being guests on podcasts, you know, and so just scheduling those things that are like actually generating revenue or just like always the priority, like the revenue generating. I think like, so my wife used to do an, um, an MLM company, multi-level marketing. So they had this phrase I really liked. It's like, focus on your income producing activities. So any income you have in your, or any task you have in your business that produces income, like that should be like priority number one, because if you want to make income, you got to focus on those tasks that are going to bring in the revenue. Right. And I think it's so easy to get distracted when you're running a business because you want to do all these different things and you want to have a really beautiful, well-rounded business. But you've got to focus on, hey, shipping the product and be set or a selling the product and be shipping the product. So, yeah, uh, great. Some great insights there. And, you know, like I, I, you seem like a really interesting person. Uh, you're an ultra marathon runner right so that's that's not re- that's not super normal um you know in the nicest yeah, yeah. possible way you know that's that's you know that's exceptional that you do that you've started this cbd business um you know you clearly you have business acumen in what you're doing um so i'd love to find out a little bit more about you and you mentioned right at the top of the the, the episode that you have meditation as part of one of your daily rituals so what you know what what are the daily rituals do you have like how do you i'm a, i'm kind of obsessed with this question at the moment and that's like finding out how people structure their days and like what their rituals are for success and happiness yeah that's that's a great question so i start i mean every morning like i wake my wife and i we both wake wake up around 5 a.m so i start my morning i spend about 30 minutes of doing like stretches and exercises. And that's for me right now, that's mainly to kind of help with some chronic injuries I have. So 30 minutes of like stretching and exercise, like that next like 20 minutes is like prayer and meditation. So I'll be, I'll meditate and pray for like 20 minutes. Then from then I move into reading scripture. So I'm a Christian. And so I'll spend about the next, you know, 30 to 40 minutes, like reading scripture. Then After that's done, if I have a little bit of time left over, like before my kids wake up at seven o'clock, I'll kind of pull open the computer and just kind of get a glance at the day. I'll kind of look and see, see what sales came in over the, over the night, see if there's any customer emails and kind of just see if there's any major issues that are going to need to be addressed to start the day. And it's kind of, that gives me a little leg up and knowing what I've got going on for the day as well. And kind of gives me a little bit of clearer head uh, moving into the day and not being kind of caught off guard by anything. Yeah, and I find that like all the, the, you know, the high performance individuals and the happiest individuals always start their day with very specific, like yourself, right? Waking up early, they stretch, exercise, they meditate and they pray, they have, and then they look at kind of what they're doing. And that comes afterwards, because they feel like they kind of control the day. And um, as the last guest said, he said, like, Chris Bernard, you know, really cool guy, trains NFL athletes, super kind of high performance in that way. He says that um, for him, when he, he, he nails that morning routine, he feels like he gets that first W of the day and that allows him to continue on and win the day and there's something so powerful about that routine. So I know that we've only got you scheduled in for an hour, but I wanted to know because, you know, you're an ultra marathon runner, you know, that those are not short races for people listening. They're what, 100 miles yeah, or 100, 100 miles? 100 100k to 100 miles yeah i mean that's to me that's crazy and you said that you went through some adversity when you were dealing with your last business i always like to find out from people what you know is there any story of struggle in your life that you know that that really defined maybe who you are or your business and how did you have any mindsets or mantras that you used to overcome those difficulties maybe when you're on that last like 10 miles of the race or uh, you know you're having business problems or health problems or is you know is there anything around that that you could share yeah i think it's i really think it comes down to like positive mindset like because at the end of the day like we can control how we react to situations it's i I like the example like of like driving in traffic it's like you kind of see two different people in traffic like people that are just kind of calmly driving through traffic and you got the people are like just frustrated and antsy who are weaving in and out 
Like, I mean, that's been me before. Like, I'm not going to lie, but like, but you can choose how you react to that. Like, you know, I just, so, so my family and I have lived in our RV full time for several years. And we just came from like a little bit of a smaller town where there's like, there was like no traffic. And so like driving into work every day, was like a breeze. It was peaceful. But now I'm back in Austin and Austin is like a big city. It's full of traffic. And so like, and I'm spending like the same time in traffic, but like, it's easy to get annoyed because you're just sitting in line, you know, car after car, like waiting for it to move. And so like, I can, but that's just, that's just what it is. It's like, I can't change it. And so since I can't change it, like why be frustrated about it? And like, I think the same is true in business. It's like, you know, there's a Tony Robbins quote. I like, it's like, it says life is happening for you, not to you. Cause I think a lot of people say like, you know, say they have a struggle in their business. It's like, we had one with my old business with the um, energy bar company. It's like, it was like crippling. I thought it was going to sink our business. But it's like, you know what? I'm like, this is happening for me. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why we are going through this. Like, I mean, it it basically sapped us dry of like the remaining funds we had in the business at the time. And so it's like, I don't know how we're going to get through this, but we're going to get through it. Like, just kept a positive mindset and kept moving on. And like, in a year and a half later, like we sold the business. And so like, it's just, it's all about having a positive mindset and like, and and just not allowing yourself to be overwhelmed by like certain situations because at the end of the day, it's like, it's just what it is. Like, and you can't change it. So move forward with a positive mindset. That's so powerful. And often, as you said, we lose sight of that. Like I get frustrated as well. I'm driving around in Thailand and sometimes I'm, I'm driving my little scooter. Oh, yeah. You can imagine that, right? And at the end, and I'm telling, okay, I don't want to go into a rant about Thailand driving, but there's potholes in a lot of places and the drivers are, um, you know, it's, it's not like everyone has a license here when they drive. So people are either pulling out aggressively or they're coming out in, in the middle of the road. And sometimes I find myself getting frustrated and I'm like, why do people know how to drive? It's very <laughs> easy to slip into that headspace. Yeah, it um, is. You know, and then and then, like as you said, that Tony Robbins quote, it's it's not about the other people. It's how I feel within myself. My internal state is I'm always in control of that, so I can either be affected by every little thing. And sometimes I, you know, we know this is going on, and you know, maybe we wake up and we feel like we got up on the wrong side of bed or something, and like every little thing annoys us, and you're just ready to snap at someone. But it's yeah, I completely agree. Just keep moving forward, and and uh, I'm really glad to hear that you, you know, you sold your business, and now you've started Hemp Daddies, and that sounds like it's going really well. So. Thank you so much, Caleb, for sharing your insights and um, you know telling your story and, and, and teaching us all about CBD and hemp and cannabis and marijuana and all that good stuff. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, one final question, and that's what does the future hold for you um, and where do you see Hemp Daddies going? What's your goals? Yeah, so our, our I mean, it's hard to say. I feel like with this business, like my my goals kind of shift like almost daily. It's like, I mean, so right now, like we're trying to, we've been in talks with um, another kind of hemp CBD like company. And they're basically kind of like a, it's kind of like an umbrella company that owns several hemp companies. So we're considering like partnering with them to like really grow this and blow it out of the water because they have lots of resource in terms of like, you know, partnerships with farms. They have like an accounting team, like a customer service team. So it's one of those things where like we can really get plugged in with them and allow me to really focus on the things I'm passionate about, like, you know, educating consumers and in like in creating new products and things like that. And so like we just hope to really grow this into like one of the industry leaders in like the CBD space. Cause right now, like since there's like probably over 2000 CBD brands, it can be overwhelming. And so there's no clear industry leaders. And so like one of my main goals is just to be like kind of one of the top 10 
you know, CBD companies out there and be one of the industry leaders, like, so in just really focusing on educating people and providing them with like amazing products. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think if you carry on in the same way and you keep, you know, your, your, your business strategy, as you mentioned, and you keep moving forward, I can't see why that's not going to happen. And your passion as well for the industry is to me is very clear. So yeah, thank you so much, Caleb. Where can people buy some of your products, find out about you, follow you? Where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, the best place is just hempdaddies.com. That's just H-E-M-P-D-A-D-D-Y-S.com. And we're also on Instagram is a great place to follow us as well. It's we kind of it's a little weird on there. It's just hemp underscore daddies. And so yeah, we post a lot of content on there as well. But, you know, the website is the best place to start. And you can even find us on Instagram and Facebook through the website. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much, Caleb. I learned, honestly, I learned a ton. It was really a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, you bet. I enjoyed it. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed this episode, please go over to iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, subscribe to us. If you think we deserve a five-star rating, then please leave us a rating. We also have exclusive show notes and bonus content over at whosgoingtostopme.com, so I highly recommend you check that out. For daily lessons and nuggets of advice, please head over to our Instagram at stopmepodcast. Until next time.